My name is Marcia Wild, I'm 61. I uh, live in Charlotte, just outside the city. I was born in Lansing by mistake. I was supposed to be a country girl, but I got out there finally. I've been diagnosed with uh, a terminal cancer. It's in the liver right now, and um, it is basically going to cause my death. I retired from 36 years with the state of Michigan in uh, the end of September 2011 and went to work for Prairie Funeral Home as a general office manager. So I was there for about two and a half years and um, uh, loved it there, wonderful people, the best job to have and uh, learned a lot and I think it had some benefit to me to prepare me for this part of the, my life or the end of my life. I think this was part of God's plan to show me that it didn't have to be a scary thing and that, um, you know, people people pass away from cancer all the time and it's not, it, it's, I don't stick out in the crowd, it's not personal, it's not, you know, happening to me, it's just one of the ways that the human body goes frail and ceases to, to uh, operate and separates from your from your soul and I'm comfortable with it. When working with the praise one thing that I've experienced um, sadly to say way too many times is the family dynamic that enters that is uh, very sad and very unnecessary and um, so destructive within the family unit. People should be pulling together at that time and supporting each other regardless of anything that's ever happened in the past because it's just not about you it's about the person who's deceased and honoring them and their lives and what matters to them it was felt that maybe I had a unique um, way of looking at what's going on uh, and that maybe some things that I'm thinking and feeling uh, could be helpful to families to get them through this time and, uh, and come out of it in a better, more understanding, and more accepting way that's less detrimental to everybody concerned. I'm not one who likes to get in front of a camera or be in spotlight by any means, but I thought it was an important enough thing to, to do. And so I'm very willing to do that if it helps anybody at all. I'm gonna be really candid about this because I think it's important, and, and this is a good basis for why I'm handling this like I am. And, um, I'm not a religious person. I don't go to church. I haven't gone to church of any denomination for many, many, many since I was a kid. Um, it's not a matter of that. It's, it's a matter of relationship with God, and He makes it okay. And we talk every day, and I encourage people to do that. Just establish your own type of relationship, whatever it might be, because He will, he will lead you through this life on earth and he'll lead you into the next one, whatever that might be. This is God's choice. He's been incredibly good to me. Um, I had a rough first part of my life, as a lot of people do. I learned a lot. I came a long way. He was by my side. He put up with a lot of crap from me, and, and he was still always there. And there was a turning point when he when I think I, I finally kept fighting him and he just he was just there in so many fantastic ways my life just bounded to a better level the things that I that I was searching for went from material to um, peace just a peace and and I found that and he helped me find that and he's been so good to me that whatever his decision is for me at this time I completely and 100% um, trust him and have faith in his decision, and it makes it totally okay with me. I'm sharing this with my family in a wide open manner. We talk about it. We talk about what the symptoms and you know the physical, the getting tired, the aches and pains that come along, what I can and cannot eat, and it was just wide open discussion about. It. It was no secrets. I didn't want anybody feeling they had to whisper or you know, worry about my feelings or that type of thing. It's a hush-hush situation is just not what I wanted. And it's it's gone really, really well. And I'm thinking and I'm hoping that it's ha helping my family to accept this as well. For someone 
in your position to to even have the mindset to think the way you think about it to me is exceptionally exceptionally brave and but i do I do really like the part about where we're, we're very open about it and we talk about anything about it. Mm -hmm. And we don't, you know, she told my Marsha, no, yeah. Nah, it's all, we talk it's about all of it. Yeah. It makes it a whole lot easier that you're handling it and you know what's coming and you, you have the courage to face it and, and deal with it the way you are. It's, it makes it a lot easier and just that, um, not self pity, not you're not negative, you're you're keeping a positive outlook and that just makes everything go I mean, as smoothly as it can. I know, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You're yeah. brave for all of us. Yeah. You're basically you're only looking out for everybody you are. around. You're you. brave for all of us. Yeah. Because yeah. we're not as brave as you are. The only thing that I was really concerned about in this whole process was fear. I didn't want to live with fear, that whole adrenaline thing, the thing that twists your guts up and, you know, just what's going to happen next and he's delivered me from all of that I have zero um, concern about that it's remarkable it's remarkable to me and um, there's just been great people around me and but mostly he and I talk God and I talk every night and I thank him for everything and I just gave it to him and trust him and uh, it's 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 fine it's just it's fine I don't think I know it's hard for the people left behind but there's an advantage for the people leaving. I think there's you gotta at some point be willing to you know give to that as well, and even to a point of almost you know be happy for me. Um, I don't have to deal with even though my life is right as far as I can tell. There's absolutely nothing that I want. There's nothing that I need. I have everything I've ever wanted. And again, it's not material, but I have my horses, I have my property, everything I want. My bucket list is empty. There's nothing, I can't imagine anything it would have to put in a bucket list to do. Um, it doesn't get much better than that. And so I'm ready, and, uh, and it's, it's okay. It's perfectly okay. Find that higher energy and um, cling, hang on, and he will... He will get you through this, you and your family through this, and it'll be fine. It doesn't. It's not scary. It doesn't have to be scary. But you've got to, you've got to find that strength. And my strength is God, and um, and He's doing it for me. He's taking care of me in just the most amazing ways. So I just highly encourage the families to find that God and um, have faith. And that's why the other part of this whole deal is that, you know, it's, there's a separation in the body and the soul, the body and who I am. I'm not, I'm not dying. I'm not, it's just that this body is defective now and it's wearing out and it's not operating correctly to sustain itself. And, you know, and that's going to happen to every single one of us. But I'm not, you know... I'm personally not dying. I don't I think that's why we don't feel eighty when we're when we're eighty. We still feel ten, fifteen, twenty five, whatever the age is or whatever. Um, it's just this thing that anchors us to the earth. And uh when it wears out we all go up into that spiritual realm and and uh, you don't need this thing to weigh us down and stuff. Things change. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all.